He'll head in towards Archives and get caught. The hammer heads into orbit, but it's home once again is North America. Space Station Gaming are your world champions. Hey, what's up guys? Name's Roy, and today Ubisoft has kindly offered to sponsor this video and to remind y'all to tune in November 13th through November 15th for the NAR6 November 2020 Major. Bringing the four best teams in North America one step closer to the Six Invitational, and don't miss the North American Finals this December. In this video, I wanted some of the community's finest, achieved, hot and cold, Canadian and Fox A to commentate and analyze a round that meant a lot to them in their pro league career. I hope you guys learn a lot from their insight and enjoy the video. Hey, I'm Matthew Solomon, also known as Achieved, and uh, I'm going to be taking y'all through like a clip and basically this is a clip from invite um, It was a very important match. It was the last map of the winners finals. So whoever won this went to the grand finals and We are currently down 6-4 on cafe against SSG uh, so winning this round was crucial to push us into the next round and uh, potentially OT so basically, we knew they were going to be doing an underclear. Um, that's why they have the buck, because they're going to basically bring him below to try to buck underneath Cocktail. Uh, they also have a few people helping him, one from Snow Door, uh, one also on the dining repellent. And as they started swinging in, Bo started contesting them. He ended up getting a big kill on buck, which was really crucial because they they weren't able to buck below anymore. But they still had two guys in the bottom floor. Um, they had thinking aid down here. He was the guy down here more like watching flanks. And then they're also going to put two guys on the windows. Canadians on box repel. And then Bosco's on the cocktail repel. Um, I heard thinking aid run away. So I pushed out reading door. I killed him. I knew no one was going to be watching the box. So I also killed that guy. And then I heard Bosco get off the repel. Basically run towards me. So I threw the nitro and cleaned that up too. You started off by talking about how you knew like relatively what SSG was going to be doing that round. Is that just from like studying VODs or was this something that you had already seen previously in the round? Um, so SSG, basically we've watched a few VODs back and we knew that they like to do a push like this. Mm -hmm. um, we also actually developed a push very similar to this. Uh, we kind of got the idea from them. Nice. So we knew like the weaknesses of the push. So when you know the weaknesses of a push, you can kind of abuse them a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, so we did that, but overall, like we just VOD reviewed it and we knew they like to do this push. Uh, I guess in, in this clip specifically, how much flexibility do you have to be, I guess, extra aggressive? I would say we're allowed to be pretty much as aggressive as like as we want, um, especially like, especially if you see like your teammates are getting aggressive. If you see your teammates are getting aggressive, you definitely want to get aggressive like off of them and play off of each other. Yeah. Uh, but overall, like unless we have like a few man advantage, like unless we have like a sometimes a one man advantage or sometimes two man advantage it all depends completely um after i killed after buck was dead like we we could have all probably just sat in a corner because yeah. they wouldn't have been able to buck below us so we didn't like have to get aggressive mm -hmm. but like i seen a play that i could make so i ended up making it but overall like if like the aggression is fine um as long as you're not like throwing away around like if you have a two man ad advantage you don't want to just like run at people right unless like Obviously, every situation is different, so it's kind of hard to give like insight on it for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically, if you're going to get aggressive, try to make sure that like your teammates are going to get aggressive with you. And what's this? Achieved allowed to run out. He's got a nitro cell as well. Oh my God, Achieved! What in the hell was that from Achieved? He's a one-man army. Hello, this is Matthew Hot Cold Stevens. I am a support player for Dark Zero Esports, and this is one of my favorite plays that I've ever made. This is a round from Japan finals against FaZe Clan. Prevent them from accessing the site directly, but FaZe is having none of it. Look at I think we, I think we lost like some of our better sites. So we just chose to go open area. The finish line, but at least somewhat prepared as there's mint. And we knew, we knew these guys had subs, so they were probably just going to do some like crazy rush stuff. But sadly, uh, us knowing didn't really help us. They still, they still. Just us. <laughs> Forty seconds in, and two members are dead. One of either team. The castle's down. The ashes. Down. I remember. I'm supposed to play up top on this strat, but we, like I said, we knew they were gonna rush. So I, I played closer to site, like main stairs. A lot of people used to love running up garage stairs, 
into sight. From phase was well read, but Dark Zero understood that it was coming and they were prepared. And for the time being, at least it's been rebuffed. As one of the walls inside of Skylight Stairwell blows open from an exit. I think I remember Nyx like screaming. <laughs> screaming at screaming at us that uh that they have the sight wall open and he's like trapped basically trying to kill people with a shock. As well, the sound of the EOD goes off. Chaos is raining over both of these teams, but Nick is there to possibly quarterback a defense. 3v2 favor. I gave up main control because no one was pushing that. I'm just trying to like get to an actual spot that can help Nick. Flashbangs sail over and he remains wide-eyed for the time being. It's two ACOG sitting there, Michael. Great hold position here from Nyx, but he's been spotted now, and the marks come out, forcing the rotate. Map setting up a nade for someone who's not even there anymore, and it will go wide. With the HP on Mav, so he can die to a single shot. From I just Mav. remember, I remember at like this point, they like weren't doing all that much, so it was like very weird to play. Two kills in this round, and he's being a big factor for his team. Dark Zero down to hot and cold. Who's I was just trying to look for like 1v1 fights right here to try and at least get one pick. And there goes Cameraman! It's I think my teammate called, I don't know who, pretty sure my teammate called that I downed that guy outside the window, and the other two I knew were lit because I just shot at him. So I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna win by zapping these guys. Left. So this is not a rush situation for FaZe. They will pick up Cameraman. So we're back to a one on three. At this point, I knew that they left the site to try and go pick up his guy. Sit factor here for Hot and Cold. If he can play this correctly, he cannot vault this. So he'll. I remember getting mad that that was not a rotate. <laughs> So. He has noticed this though. It doesn't seem like there's a camera, and there's a nice kill for Hot and Cold. I didn't know exactly where these two guys were at the at here. He can deny the plant with the evil eye and just keep himself alive. I think my teammates called one above. He's planning. I'm like, okay, he's got to be low. I didn't know how low. Zapping him. Then this guy just jumps in, and I don't. I honestly don't know where that guy was going. Incredible. I remember after this moment though. Like after this round, I screamed so loud that I literally had to like meditate after this round because I, I was just shaking. And as far as like HP wise, going into like a 1v3, having such low HP, is that in the back of your mind in terms of like how aggressive you are with your peaks? Um, I would say definitely a lot of the time it is. At that moment, no, just because I knew I needed to play aggressive to find the 1v1s. Like the best way to win in v1, any 1v1 or 1v situation is to you know get those 1v1s. You don't want to like put yourself in spots where they can just trade you out. Right. And then yeah, the the last guy that's like running through archives, like where where is he going? I I honestly have no clue where that guy was going. <laughs> I maybe they thought I was like still main side. Yeah. Like I rotated back main side. Right. Like I yeah I was just like okay this guy's not on the camera. I'm right. just going to get off and hope that he doesn't find me. Right. And I see him just jump into the window randomly. In terms of, like, the rotate, I mean, you rotated all the way from open area, like, out into the hallway, then had to make your own, you know, partial rotate. Is that a, is that normal, or was that completely improv, like, what's going through your head there? Well, I'm pretty sure that those holes that I made beforehand, I don't think we ever did that. I just did that reactively, off, like, based off of their take. Then I thought it was a rotate trying to jump into it. That's why you could see me like yeah. messed up a little bit. And I'm like, right. oh crap, they're going to hear me make this. After I made it, I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to go with it. Hopefully they didn't hear me. Oh, and cold. Incredible. Uh, hey guys, I'm Canadian, the in-game leader of SS3. Uh, and this is a clip of my 1v5 from the invitational qualifiers from last year's 2020 invitational this was the grand finals of the qualifiers um in this series we we're up 2-1 in the map count you can probably see that um and yeah it was uh it was a it was a big round i mean obviously a 1v5 is always nice but i will say i think a lot of the time it just kind of happens and like this was another one where it was kind of thrown my way i got lucky but uh the stakes of it i guess are what make it pretty cool in my opinion uh so yeah it was a 1v5 and I mean, if the map was really close, so if we didn't win the round, we probably would have had to go to another map. And it was the final chance to qualify for Invitational. So if we didn't qualify, we never would have won it. Just four in a row for uh, Luminosity then. All right, so yeah, here we're defending uh, Workshop Vent. Uh, not the best site. And yeah, well, previously in the map, didn't go well for us. Uh, wasn't feeling the most confident in it. Uh, I think, I'm pretty sure we called like 
in the prep phase like that when we ran back this site basically we were gonna play it to try to get like kills on them like fight them and not let them get map control and um as you're gonna see it doesn't go it doesn't go too well for us we fall pretty quick so basically we we called it early just like the, the previous take that these guys did against us, they took from the, the office and east side. And they're a team that had always kind of done that, so we kind of knew it coming into the round. Um, and we called the setup to be like more of a, a stack towards the office side where we put more utility there and contested it more. Um, as you can see with like ADSs and reinforcements over there. So we were, we were playing to contest this. Um, we kind of We kind of knew what was coming our way. And yeah, right now they're just basically working out Rampy. Rampy's in the in the corner. We call it fire, um, and they're just working him out, trying to get the pick on him. Around and support his teammate ASAP. And there's Rampy being down. You don't really know when your opponent's been downed. And yeah, they dumped all the utility. They impacted below. Fired him apparent or wait. <laughs> I swear I saw fire on the screen. Maybe they didn't fire him. Impacted below. Habana'd everything though. Uh, yeah, not a good spot for him. Uh, and now my position's kind of bad, so I drop out because I was mostly there just to help Rampy. And once Rampy died, couldn't do much from there, so I drop out. Um, Fultz, I guess, gets picked in sight. Or, yeah, Fultz got picked in the site. I actually don't know how Bosco died, and now Nade died too. And I was literally thinking in my head, I was like, there's no chance I win this. And I was like, I'm just going to push this rotate and try to get my freebie. And then there were just three guys lined up. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I think the, the Thatcher kind of trolled there by peeking me. But after I got those kills, I just knew like I could win it. This guy's fighting me in the middle of the bomb site, So just taking a little fight a little bit. Um, I know I have Diffuser down this whole time. So I wanted to fall back into Tellers to, to kind of cover it. And... I just got an angle, good angle, good peek onto me. Uh, another free kill just to get it down to a 1v1. And now at this point, um, honestly, it played a lot into my advantage because we still had information in the site. So I just played back um, and just played off my team's calls. I knew where he would be planning or if he would be planning, then I knew he left the site. I ran back into the site and just kept uh, forcing him to chase me around until time ran out and then he had to sprint at me. And then. I got I got a little hyped up and typed in the chat. <laughs> I was gonna say, did was there a big <laughs> woo after that? <laughs> oh, there was there was yeah some words. <laughs> oh no, and I see chat's a little quiet on LG's side. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, so like, so what's the significance of a one v five to a pro? Like, is that is that just part of the job, or, or is that okay, still pretty well, exciting? Like no, 1v5 is pretty exciting because that is not supposed to happen. Right, for sure. right. But, um, I mean, yeah, it, it's a big deal. Uh, almost always the other team is trolling, though, like to let you get a 1v5. Sure. You know, um, they a lot of mistakes have to be made. I mean, what? so I will say, usually if a team is making enough mistakes to give you a 1v5, usually like the match isn't that close in the first place i feel like but mm -hmm. when it happens in a close match like that's what made it so special to me right was that it was like a close like high stakes match and it happened right so i got really hyped about it i mean you get really hyped about it either way but and why the commando over the pironi um because i would have ran out of ammo <laughs> see that's I, what I literally I wouldn't have won that round if i had situation the pushes in the bathroom Gets one, and a second. Diffuser down. Canadian can win this round if he gets the third, and he does. A beautiful three-piece for Canadian. Canadian's gonna be able to win this if he just plays it on time, and he's gonna do exactly oh! that! Canadian! An absolutely rock-solid, insane clutch based on time and positioning. Yeah, what's going on, guys? It's your boy, your boy Fox A, coming at you live on Roy's channel. Um, but seriously, uh... Roy, reach out to me. Uh, I'm Fox A. I'm a professional Rainbow Six player for uh, OXG or Oxygen Sports currently. Um, and today we're going to be going over, I guess, one of the clips uh, from my career that was pretty meaningful to me. I personally feel I was like one of the top three like Jackal players in like North America. Uh, Jackal was like super strong at the time. Uh, this one, everyone was him. They didn't really know how to counter him, so. Um, I feel like that was a huge strength of our team is uh, me and Lax would kind of like float around to I guess kind of play like play like picks play like kills 
and then we would have like the core three of our team be able to get a play. So I mean, pretty much what happens right off the bat is we're getting for Intel and nothing's going on and two picks come out for uh, EG right away. So we just say like, okay, okay, like if we want to win, we got to like make a play. So we decide to smoke, uh, run into the site. And I feel like I never got the credit for being as crazy as I was in this round, but as Mark smokes and plants, I literally make so much space for the for the round and actually end up getting three kills to equalize it and bring it back to a three on one. By like one, jumping up onto the pool table, killing the guy by the pink bar. Then I push, swing the pink bar, kill the guy cool vibes. And then I jump into hookah and kill the guys rotating up to cool vibe. And it just uh, kind of, it, the spectator didn't get it, but it just leaves Troy in a 1v, uh, 1v3. He actually ends up killing me and Mark. I had no ammo in my gun after killing his team. And then, like I said, that purple tarp, after the, the fuser was put down, Mark put it in a great spot. Lax was just able to kind of hold it from the purple tarp. And it was a pretty, like, I don't know, it was pretty unwinnable 1v1 for Troy. That was incredible. I remember, like, the upset that this felt like. And so, especially being so nostalgic, I mean, you got, you got purple tarps, you got Troy's got blue hair, and then you got freaking uh, Retro was rocking R4C with the ACOG, so... Uh, it's just crazy how much has, has already changed, bro. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, the game's in a completely different state now. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I think of like insane like highlight plays, like I feel like that round just just because the spectator wasn't able to catch it, that round is probably one of the craziest, I guess, situations that I feel like I've been able to like win, like bring back for my team. Just yeah. like being able to get those like three kills like super quicker. Especially just, just back. since y'all, I mean, y'all rushed into site with, uh, what, a 3v5? Yep. That's awesome. Got the two picks down low from our teammates who were trying to, like, clear out blue bar. Mm -hmm. So we just said, like, you know, like, if we're going to do anything, we have to do it now. So Mark just smoked Tuka, and that just allowed me to kind of jump on the pink, uh, on the pool table to kill the guy pink. And then from there, I mean, yeah, it, it just one after the other of them trying to come back. And their sight line from Hookah was, like, cut off. So I was just winning the 1v1s, looking down the cool vibe hall yeah and so did Vlax was he with y'all on that push or was he already heading outside to get on the tarps so so at the time I mean Lax was also known for like he would go purple tarp and like play purple tarp the whole game and I don't know how he would do it but he would somehow always get a kill there <laughs> like I, I just really I really don't know how yeah. but I mean it had a good angle onto the hookah bar so like it really allowed us to be able to not have to worry about hookah so him being there, I think he gets there at the start of the round, and then he would just sit there uh, until the end of the round. So really, for the push, um, that's why I think it was so crucial, because if I didn't get, not even just one, if I didn't get like all three of those kills, they would have like killed Mark while he was planting. The case would have never been gone down, mm -hmm. and then Lax would have never been into that position because right. he would have purple tarp. So in terms of it firepower was, you were the only one in sight that was actually like dealing with those people yeah, yeah mark was mark went to try to get the case down for lax and then lax was just holding the hookah so no one could swing right um and then that's when i was just like i, I had to win those fights relaxing on tarp reciprocity eliminate evil geniuses i did not think this day would come over I hope you guys learned from these amazing pros. It truly is so fun to watch them play live. So I encourage y'all to head over to twitch.tv slash rainbow six to witness these boys putting their minds to the game. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one.